I'm Sophie Rodner. Welcome to this news briefing from the 255th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in New Orleans. We're joined today by Ti Shen Huang from the University of Cambridge. He's studying a candy cane polymer weave that could power future functional fabrics and devices. Mr. Wong. Uh, so here we have the, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, we're making uh, materials that can be used for the supercapacitor applications. And supercapacitor, as you most many of you may know, it's a fast charging device. Basically, thinking about you can charge your phones in a few minutes. That probably supercapacitor can do, whereas basically battery cannot do. And what we have here is. Uh, um, well, recently there is some development using the conducting polymers as the supercapacitor acting materials because they can, instead of charging, the, having the charge only stored on at the surface of the materials, they actually can have the charge stored inside the materials. So it's actually improved the capacitance of the materials. And uh, what, but the problem is conventionally the ions for the energy storage are only accessible to the surface of the materials. And what we have here is we're actually making a, a material that enables an interweaving structure, which conduct, which composing the uh, conducting polymers with uh, ionic conducting uh, ionic conducting polymers. So in our case, we're actually enabling the ions to migrate into the materials to interact fully with the materials. And uh, rather, uh, rather beyond the enhancement of the capacitance, what we have here is. Uh, we, uh, when we done the experiment, we just realized it actually can improve the stability of the materials in terms of the electrochemical cyclings, as well as the capacitance of when you actually stretch it when ba or bend it as well. So actually, here, as my supervisor mentioned, Stoya mentioned, it's actually we throw a stone and kill three birds, basically. <laughs> and uh, so we are currently to, uh, like collaborating with the Cambridge Enterprise, and we try to. Uh, having the better performance and also potentially to seek the opportunities for the commercializations and probably will benefit of the entire world. And uh, I, I uh, thought for this work, um, I would like to make uh, uh, my own appreciations about uh, the, uh, uh, the basic contributions from my super supervisors and our collaborators as well as uh, uh, Kara Fong, who is currently uh, a student, a graduate student in the Berkeley University. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. At this time, we'd like to invite any questions, and if you have one, please state your name and affiliation. We'll try that again. We'll try that again. Hello, Ben Carlson from Chemistry World magazine, also based in Cambridge. Uh, what sort of energy density would it be at, and how does that compare to yes. modern batteries like lithium ion batteries? Well, um, um, it will be better than the conventional capacitor, but um, it will have less storage cap capacity or capability than the conventional batteries. But the main advantage is we want to have a relatively good. Uh, and storage capability, but uh, really a very good input and output power. That's actually the key here using the supercapacitor uh, because, as you may see, fast charging and fast discharging to enable high power applications is really something people are pursuing now. And uh, having woven two different polymers together, how does that affect the mechanical properties? Is it more or less? flexible, stretchable than each of the polymers on the road? Um, well, um, we actually previously uh, really focusing on these kind of, we call the interpenetration structures. And uh, conventionally, we use the ionic conducting polymer, uh, which in this case is the PEO, polyethylene oxide. But itself is pretty fragile, like uh, the gelatin that you should probably know. And uh, here is we realize that by interpenetrating a tougher conducting polymer, the entire structure can happen. And uh, what's actually interesting is uh, it has some kind of elasticity, better elasticity than before. So uh, it's something, you know, we are st still engaging the explorations, but uh, yeah, that's so far we have learned. Yeah. 
And could you just give us an idea of the sorts of applications you think these woven polymers are likely to have? Yeah, because it's an uh, energy storage device, but the really uh, it's flexible, and the potentially some of the combinations are potentially implantable or biocompatible as well. So the current, uh, well, for the lower entry market, well, we, we're thinking probably it's like the wearable devices, or the you know currently the IoT the Internet of Things is really big movement in the in the globally. And uh, but uh, really for the long term targets for the high entry, we're really thinking about maybe we can even power some implantable devices using our implantable entry storage uh, device. So that's uh, really something we're really pursuing. Now. Thank you. American Chemical Society. Uh, these supercapacitors, I, I know they've been around for a while, and, uh, and, but what's the, the actual uh, lifetime and, and uh, durability of these things compared to a battery? I, you know, batteries have it, uh, their disadvantages. This sounds like an ideal system in some of its things, but they were, were always low power system, uh, systems. Uh, uh, is there a potential of getting really high power uh, power system, uh, you know, beyond the car even, even. and then uh, since these are far fast charging devices and so forth, uh, is there a potential of, of making it such so uh, so you could start, uh, essentially start sucking up the, uh, the atmospheric electricity, you know, like like. Like basically, there is an infinite amount of, of power out there. You know, there. The only problem is uh, it all wants to go into the same point at the same time, uh, time which is a hell of a big uh, in the power density, intensity. So it usually wipes out your, your capacity. Right. Um, so I think uh, I think you have asked. Thank you. That's really a great series of questions. I, I probably will uh, collectively answer some of them as far as I know. Um, so um, basically, as you mentioned, SuperQuester has been uh, actually developed for decades. And uh, actually, conventionally, it's called ultra-capacitor, which actually stands mostly for the carbon-based supercapacitors. They are great in terms of the electrochemical stabilities. Because uh, people, I think, measure uh, like a thousand, thousand cycles for that. And uh, the reason they really want to bring a large number of cyclings, maybe even larger than the batteries, because those devices are, can charge, charge really fast. So battery probably use it and charge it once per day, like you probably when you go to sleep and you charge your phone, right? But these supercapacitors, you can charge it in a few minutes, so there is some necessity to actually charge a few times or a dozen times probably per day for these things. And, uh, but actually, the biggest hurdle for what we are engaging, which is the conducting polymer based supercapacitor, is uh, the stability. So, uh, talking about the current based one, there are thousand, thousand cycles. Here, we are a few thousand cycles. That's uh, uh, already something at cutting edge of these materials. So, uh, we are working on the better stability. Um, here, actually, what's interesting to the in the connecting polymer based supercapacitor community is uh, by interpenetration. We are not just uh, improving the capacitance of the, or the usage of the active materials. We also enhance its uh, electrochemical stabilities. So it's a way that uh, we giving a concept to tell people, OK, if you're working on a similar regime, maybe you can consider our way to like, improve the stability of the materials. And uh, I mean, in the future, uh, what I can answer for your question in the later part of your question is uh, uh, maybe supercapacitor with other materials or the composite them will be giving delivering higher powers like what you are dreaming of. <laughs> and but uh, I mean in terms of the conducting polymer by itself, I think uh, uh, it's probably more useful for in terms of the like uh, a combination of the stretchability or where uh, the uh, good mechanical robustness uh, was as well as the relatively good power density that's what I can Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, one more question. Uh, it, as far as physical size, uh, size, how do they compare it currently to, to a battery that puts out a re reasonable amount of power at a reasonable rate as opposed to a supercapacitor which does have the, the, the ability to, to, to power things at the fast? But you know, how, how much difference is there in size and where do you see them you know, going by uh, you know, kind of converging with each other? Um, it too depends on the materials. I think the, the question is really uh, broad, <laughs> um, but it really depends on the materials. For example, if uh, uh, as far as I know, I'm also working on the lithium ion batteries, and uh, these lithium ion batteries can be small as long as uh, uh, the uh, we call the volumetric power density is uh, really high. And uh, whereas, okay, I can only give you the answer for conducting point based and this one uh, maybe have slightly less volumetric power density, but uh, what's actually interesting is these have very good mass power density. For example, these are pretty polymer-based stuff, and the density of polymers is very equivalent, similar order to the water. Equipment. So it's actually much lighter than the metal oxides or metal stuff. Maybe it's heavier than carbon, I put this way, but uh, it's really in the Having the advantage of the mass power density. Yeah, uh, in terms of volume, it's, it's probably kind of big, but uh, it depends on the material application you want to use. Thank you very much. Any further questions? All right, thank you. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACSLive underscore netlab. Please join us for our next press conference at 10 30 a.m. today about how smoked foods can now be tastier and less harmful with a tip from the auto industry. Thank you.